So let's go over some of the key points of that last video. I think he did a really good job. Um, so one thing is, is that homosexual behavior occurs in many animal species. I remember when I was a kid, this was earlier times, and we would be questioning about sexual orientation, and we would say, hmm, well, if animals don't do it, then it's not natural. What we didn't know is that plenty of animal species do engage in homosexual behavior. Um, another one is, is uh, most men discover sexual orientation early and the process is slower for women. The last video that you watched really talked about how female sexuality seems to be much more fluid than male sexuality. So women seem to be able to go in and out uh, and change, are more changeable than men. Just kind of like the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, right? Nature made its way. Um, so then the last video definitely did talk a lot about childhood behavior correlating um, strongly with uh, people being able to tell are they likely to grow up to be gay and these different types of play behaviors. So they um, found that feminine type behaviors during childhood and adolescence correlate strongly with homosexuality in males, but not quite as strongly with females. And they went over a lot of that in the last video. Um, the last video also talked about some subtle average behavioral and anatomical differences. They talked about um, that homosexual men uh, tend to be slightly shorter than heterosexual men. Um, they also talked about descriptions, the way we describe things. Gay men use landmarks more often when giving directions. It's like a lot of uh, heterosexual men will say, okay, you're going to go about a mile down the street and then you're going to turn right and then it'll be the first left about a quarter mile down the road. Whereas females and gay men are more likely to say, well, you're going to go down the street and when you see the right aid, then you're going to make a turn there towards the right aid and then um, you're going to see this house and it has a great big tree in the front and that's the corner so you would turn a left. Um, so it used to be that they would teach that, uh, they thought that homosexuality was on the X chromosome. Um, we're not finding a lot of this research changes continually and they're not finding that as much. However, they definitely are finding that if one twin is homosexual, the probability that the other twin is homosexual is fairly high. Now they're saying fairly high in past editions of the textbook. They've talked about 50%. I used to show this video um, that said 70%. So I guess they're not making a big statement on exactly how high. So some prenatal influences. So like I've been talking about in these past videos is how there are organizing effects of hormones. And we saw with intersexuality that the uh, genitals get organized by the hormones. They have a major role in organizing the genitals. But um, they're also finding that prenatal hormones may also play a role in organizing different parts of the brain. So when we look at regular, like the activating effects of hormones, we don't find that lesbians and gay men have any different levels of hormones. Um, they're about the same. So they think that if hormones have something to do with sexual orientation, it would be early in development, like prenatal development. Now this, I think, is, I, I feel like this is such a great class to have as far as being pregnant and learning about the epigenetics of pregnancy and how important your diet is. And I, I think I went into a talk about that, uh, you know, I've had five children and that I have a doctor each time and none of the doctors ever sat me down and said, hey, do you know how important your diet is? And here's another thing that I think a lot of people don't uh, realize is they found a lot of um, information about what prenatal stress can do to you. So the mother's immune system may exert prenatal effects. Mother may react to protein in the sun and alter subsequent sun's development. So that's this effect. Uh, dang, I can't think of maybe birth order. That's the word that I'm working, looking for, birth order effect. 
So the more males that a woman has, supposedly the odds that the younger child will be gay go up significantly the more and more males that she has. And um, they believe that this, um, the more times that she has a son, that she gets better, at, she gets less and less efficient of actually masculinizing the son because of this reaction to a protein. So, for example, um, in my family, the youngest one would have a higher probability of growing up to be gay um, than one of the older ones. So they have found an interesting effect that way called the birth order effect. Um, here's another thing that they found prenatal exposure to stress and alcohol may play a role. I did read in your textbook that they even said aspirin could play a role, and then they talked about the... Uh, chemicals and water bottles that they can have an effect on the developing baby. Um, so stress releases endorphins and this seems to antagonize which stop the effect of testosterone on the hypothalamus. And that's an area where we found differences in the homosexual male brains and the heterosexual male brains. We aren't finding as many uh, brain differences between females, lesbians. We don't find the same structural differences that we have found with uh, gay males. Let's see what the structural di differences are. Um, here's just support about stress. Laboratory research in RATCH has shown that prenatal stress can alter sexual development. Male subjects subjected to either prenatal stress or alcohol developed male and female sexual behaviors. Male subjects exposed to both stress and alcohol during the prenatal development had decreased male sexual behavior. So interesting how we should be educated about how important it is to take care of ourselves during pregnancy such a powerful time um so uh here's the uh differences in brain anatomy that i started to talk about there um so they have the homosexual brain is shifted towards the opposite sex in some but not always Several reported differences have no link to sexuality. So here's the biggie is, yes, they have a larger anterior commissure and suprachiasmatic nucleus, but the one that they usually talk about with, with regard to sexual orientation is called the interstitial nucleus of the anterior hypothalamus number three. And we will see a picture of that, but they also call it the INA3. And the gentleman that was found to find this, his name is Simon LaVey, and he lives right in West Hollywood in um, my home, you know, in the uh, Los Angeles area. And he's written a sexuality textbook. I've met him a few times. He's a really great guy. Um, so he was the one that uncovered these next pictures that we're going to see. So here it is, is uh, these are the typical sizes. So as you can see, this would be a heterosexual male, and this is what a female's would look like, or a homosexual male's. Um, so they found that, as you can see, heterosexual males have this area that's almost twice the size. And so that this is a major structural difference that they've seen in homosexual and heterosexual males. And they believe that this occurs during the second trimester. 